Hey, I'm Tristan, I'm the founder of Wheelworks. We did this video as an overview between the DT Swiss 350, 240 EXP and 180 EXP. And that video kind of covers the overall which one you might want to buy. We also have done this video, which is a super tech nerd alert, going down super deep onto each one of these hubs. And I absolutely love my job because I've got to pull apart $2,000 worth of hubs and weigh every single component in it. And we're going to talk about the comparisons between all of them. Let's get into it. All right, so let's first talk about the bearings. DT Swiss are absolutely renowned for their bearing quality. They probably have the longest lasting bearings in the hub market. And there's two reasons for that. One is they use a really good quality bearing, and the other is that they manufacture the bores and the hubs to a really precise tolerance. And that means the bearings aren't being squished or not too sloppy and floating around, and that really helps the bearing longevity. The 350, you might be surprised to learn here, has got the heaviest bearings, but probably the most durable. They use two bearings, both of them are 15 millimeter internal, 28 millimeter external, and seven millimeters wide. That's a standard hub bearing that a lot of hubs use. With the new 240 EXP, they've saved a little bit of weight in the bearings. I mean, bearings are steel, remember, so there's a, there's a big chunk of weight to be saved here. These also have a 15 mil internal, but they're 26 millimeter external and seven millimeters wide. A little bit smaller. This bearing is not quite as common, so it's going to be a little bit harder to find down the road. But obviously, DT Swiss do have good backup support, so I'm sure you will be able to get them. For the 180 EXP, on the drive side, they've kept the same bearing as in the 240 EXP. On the non drive side, we've got an even smaller bearing. So, this is again a 15 millimeter internal. External is only 24 millimeters and it's only five millimeters wide. This is a bearing that's quite often used in a front hub, so it is quite surprising to see it on the rear hub. However, you know, you can trade a little bit of weight here, so that's the point. The 350 has a steel bearing, just a normal good quality steel bearing. Same for the 240 EXP. The 180 EXP has a hybrid ceramic bearing. What does that mean? Well, it means the internal and external races are both steel. However, the actual ball bearings themselves are ceramic. Saves a little bit of weight, might last a little bit longer. However, it might not. It's probably a little bit of a much of a muchness there. Maintenance. So DT Swiss hubs are, uh, they've been out there for ages. Everyone knows how to maintain them and they're super straightforward. They're very tool free. You just basically pull the free hub body off and all the internal guts are there so that you can clean everything and lube it up. The 350 uses the, what is now the old style star ratchet system. And I mean, they're pretty low maintenance. You know, you, ideally probably once a year, you wanna pull that free hub body off, clean out the stuff that's in there, put in some fresh grease. And I would recommend that you use the proper DT Swiss grease. It does make a difference uh, and you're done. The EXP system that's used on the 240 and the 180, it's new. It hasn't been out for a year yet, so we really don't have a lot of long-term experience with it. However, it essentially functions the same way as the old Star Ratchet system, so I can't see that there's going to be any difference in terms of how frequently or not you need to maintain your hubs. Visual appearance. We're all familiar with the 350s. And I will preface this by saying that what we've got here is the, the current model 2020, 2021, 350. There are gonna be some changes for later in 2021. Uh, and I think it might be going to a matte finish, but all the stuff that's in the market at the available at the moment is, uh, is this gloss finish. It's a painted hub shell, it's not anodized. So it does tend to scratch and chip a little bit. And then the logo is put on here as a sticker. We, uh, at Wheelworks, we tend to peel these off and put on a, a nice little colored racing stripe or DT Swiss logo, something that adds a little bit of color to the, to the hub. The 240 EXP is a matte black hub, and this is an anodized surface finish. So this should last a lot longer than the painted surface finish that's on the 350. The red stripe and the DT Swiss logo are now permanent. This is not a sticker, it will not come off. If that red clashes with your bike, there's nothing you can do about it. We've tried overlaying, we've tried removing, it's not gonna happen, it is absolutely permanent. The 180 EXP is also an anodized surface finish and it's got this really nice sort of black on black polished center section here. Again, there's nothing you can do about this. It, uh, it's permanent, we can't overlay it or do anything like that, uh, but it is a really good looking hub. Probably the only downside about the 180 is it's, it's so subtle, you spend all this money on 180s and no one's gonna know about it, but there we go. Spoke type and variants. We work in the bike industry and we love to have standards. So we've got standards for everything. We've got J-Bend spokes, we've got straight pull spokes, we've got hub widths that are, you know, obviously the difference between front and rear, but then we've got boost, non-boost, quick release, through axle. There's a whole variety of different things here. And essentially, all three DT Swiss hubs come in a whole range of variants. So chances are you can get what you want. In terms of the spoke type, 
At Wheelworks, we're a big believer in J-Bend spokes. We can build a stiffer, more durable wheel than we can with J-Bend. So that's the way that we tend to go in, in every case that we can. The 350 and the 240 both come in J-Bend and in straight pull spoke. The 180 EXP only comes in straight pull. It's a little bit of a downside. However, it's a good hub, so we'll kind of let it slide on that one. In terms of hub widths and the different types of fitment for your bike, all three hubs come in a whole range of availability. We've got non-boost and boost for all of them. Uh, we've got some super boost options for the 350 and the 240. There's no super boost on the 180 yet. Six bolt rotors are available on the 240 EXP and the 350, but it's center lock only for the 180 EXP. And of course, center lock is also available on these ones as well. So the 180 has got the fewest number of options. It's got the fewest number of spoke holes that it's available in, and it's only available in straight pull spoke. The 350 and the 240 both come in essentially every variant under the sun. You can sort of mix and match those to get the, the hubs that you need for your bike. One of the reasons that people choose to buy the more expensive hub is the lighter weight. And I was really interested to see, well, where does that weight come from in terms of the individual components that's inside the hubs? That's why we've torn them down. So let's have a look at the weights of these components. All right, so looking at the weight of the hub shells, the 350 and the 240 share the most in common. They're both J-band hubs. And I had assumed here that the 240 was gonna be a lighter hub shell than the 350. And I was completely wrong about that. The 350 hub shell here is 78.4 grams. And this one is 87 grams. So it's actually heavier on the 240 than the 350. That's a huge surprise to me. The 180, however, definitely not a surprise to me that this was a lot lighter at only 66.5 grams. Axles is another big difference between the three hubs. The 350 uses this quite rudimentary axle versus the really nicely machined axle that's used on the 240 and the 180. These two axles between these two EXP hubs are absolutely identical. There's no difference between them. They both weigh 22.65 grams. The 350 axle, 31.67 grams. There's quite a bit of weight difference between these three. End caps are another area that's quite interesting. The 240 and the 180 EXP use identical end caps, and this pair weighs 15.85 grams for both. The 350, they don't have the, the nice little machine sections on the end, which make the end caps easier to remove. And you'd think that it adds a little bit of weight. It does, but it's not much. The 350 end caps, 17.25 grams. Free hub bodies are another interesting one. They're all interchangeable. They all essentially do the same thing. The 351 is a, is a sort of a light anodized gloss finish. The 240 EXP and the 180 EXP both use a matte black. The bearing between the, one, uh, the 350 and the 240 is identical. Both of these use the steel bearing. The 180 uses that hybrid ceramic bearing. These two weigh the same, 40.48 grams. And the 180 EXP saves a little bit of weight down to 39.01 grams. So you've got one gram weight saving by using those ceramic bearings. Woohoo! These are the non-drive side bearings between the three hubs. You can see that the 350 has the largest bearing, followed by the 240 EXP, followed by the 180 EXP. The 350 bearing is the heaviest, 16.12 grams. The 240 EXP, 12.12 grams. And the 180 EXP, the smallest bearing and those ceramic balls, 7.08 grams. So this bearing is less than half the weight of the bearing that's used in the 350. That's quite fascinating to me. So here we've got the internals for each of the hubs. The 350 you can instantly see has got way more internal parts to it. It's also got this big heavy steel threaded ring that goes into the hub. It's got two clutch plates. One of them slides inside this and the other one slides in the free hub body. Two individual springs, a seal. This isn't quite fair because the seals are permanently attached or semi-permanently attached to the shells on the 240 and the 180. A spacer that spaces the free hub body and then this little ring here which goes into that section and basically protects the bearing um, from any grime and grit. The EXP system that's used on the 240 and the 180 reduces the number of parts significantly and also reduces the weight significantly as well. I was really surprised to, to see this. So the 350, all of these parts here, 62.24 grams. 
On the 240 and the 180, essentially these are all the same bits. The only difference is the bearing, which is permanently attached, semi-permanently attached, into um, the threaded section that goes into the hub. Of course, the 180's got that hybrid ceramic bearing versus the steel bearing that's in the 240 EXP. We've got 36.49 grams for these, so that's a saving of 26 grams between these two and 35.24, so we're saving uh, a whopping 1.25 grams by having that hybrid ceramic bearing. Total weight saving here, 27 grams compared to the 350. So overall weights of the hub. For this comparison, all of these have been in a boost mountain bike hub with a center lock rotor. Remember the six bolt rotors will be a little bit heavier and we've used the SRAM XD3 hub body on all three of these. So these are as much as a like for like as we can possibly do. The 350 hub in total, 249 grams. The DT Swiss 240 EXP hub in total, 215 grams. So that's a 35 gram weight saving over the 350. The 180 EXP, we've got a total weight here of 186 grams. That's really light for a rear hub that works. I know you can get tune hubs and extra light hubs and other stuff that's lighter than that, but those hubs require a lot of fiddling and a lot of faffing around. The reality is that the EXP system, it just works. So 186 grams is a remarkably light rear hub. That's a weight saving of 28 grams over the 240 EXP and a whopping 63 grams over the 350. And remember that's just the rear. And once you put the front in, you've got an even bigger weight difference as well. The DT Swiss hub range at Wheelworks is one of our favorites. They work exceptionally well. They're easy to own, easy to maintain, easy to use. Very little goes wrong with them. They are absolutely excellent hubs. And I've really enjoyed pulling these apart and weighing each individual component of it. Hopefully that gives you a better insight into the three differences between these hubs. As always, like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, comment below.